From time to time, your sanitary valve requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the SPX Flow APV Delta SV and SVS series sanitary butterfly valves. Servicing the Delta SV and SVS series valves will require the tools displayed here. It is important to note the use of APV food grade grease in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the valve and its internal components. Use of other brands or types of grease may cause damage to internal components resulting in a malfunctioning valve. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply grease throughout the maintenance process. Caution must be used at all times when supplying air to the valve throughout the maintenance process. Never reach into or place fingers in the way of potentially moving components to avoid risk of injury. As seen here on the left, the standard Delta SV series butterfly valve consists of a seat positioned between two housing flanges. These flanges are normally fitted with a sanitary connection for easy installation and removal. On the right is the Delta SVS-1F intermediate flange butterfly valve. Although the valve itself is very similar to the SV series, the SVS-1F has additional flanges that are welded in line with the valve held in place by support bolting. This video will cover the maintenance of both the SV and the SVS series butterfly valves as the procedures are very similar for both products. The removal of the SVS-1F valve will be shown next. This is slightly different than the removal of the SV series with sanitary connections. The SVS-1F valve is typically provided with butt weld connections on the intermediate flanges in order to weld the flanges directly into the process line. This is the most common and hygienic connection method. Proper maintenance of this valve requires the removal of the intermediate flanges from the valve. Prior to removing the valve from the process line, shut off connecting pipelines and discharge any pressure in the lines. Next, disconnect the pneumatic and electrical connections. Finally, remove the valve position indicator or control unit if necessary. For demonstration purposes, the SVS-1F flanges are shown with less common clamp connections in this scene. To remove the intermediate flanges of the SVS-1F valve, use a 13 mm box end wrench to loosen and remove the bolts from the connection flanges. Support should be provided so that the valve does not fall and become damaged as the bolts are removed. Lift the valve from the process line and transport it to a workstation to complete the remaining maintenance procedures. With the valve removed from the process line and taken to a workstation, the maintenance process can begin on either the SV or SVS series valves. The remaining maintenance steps in this video will use the SV design with clamp connections. With two 13 mm box end wrenches, the upper two housing flange bolts can be removed so that the actuator assembly, coupling, and position indicator can be lifted off and set aside until the seat replacement is completed. Continue with the removal of the lower housing flange bolts. Grasp the connections in each hand and pull the flange halves apart, exposing the stem and seat. Remove the stem and seat from the flange half. On the SVS series only, remove the flange seals out of the groove and replace them using proper lubrication. Begin the seat replacement with the removal of the upper and lower stem bushings. Proper safety gear such as heavy cut-proof gloves are recommended during this process. Bushing removal can be achieved with a sharp cutting tool, ensuring to avoid excessive pressure as this can result in scoring of the stem as well as potential slippage of the blade. Multiple light cuts in the same location is the safest and most effective means to achieve removal.
To remove the seat, begin with turning the stem so that the disc is in the open position inside the seat as shown. Firmly place the stem flats into a vise that is fitted with brass or aluminum jaws to ensure no damage to the stem surface finish. Squeeze the seat from the sides, applying upward force, allowing the seat to free itself from the stem. Depending on the valve size, additional tools, such as a small screwdriver, may be helpful in this process. Remove the stem from the vise so that the upper stem and seat can be separated. It should be noted that the 1 inch size valve has a slightly different process for removal and installation of the seat. For a 1 inch size valve, firmly place the stem flats into a vise that is fitted with brass or aluminum jaws to ensure no damage to the stem surface finish. With the valve stem in the open position inside the seat, apply upward pressure on the entire seat. The seat will slide over the stem disc in one quick motion. Prior to installation of the 1 inch size valve seat, apply a thin layer of the recommended lubricant on the inner dimension of the seat as well as the upper and lower stem hole locations. Insert the stem into the seat and then apply downward pressure. The seat will again allow the stem disc to pass through the upper stem hole in one quick motion. On valves that are 1.5 inches or larger, apply a thin layer of the recommended lubricant on the inner dimension of the seat as well as the upper and lower stem hole locations. Begin by inserting the upper stem through the inside of one of the seat stem holes. Turn the seat wafer into the open position within the seat seal. Firmly place the stem flats into a vise that is fitted with brass or aluminum jaws to ensure no damage to the stem surface finish. Squeeze the seat seal sides while exerting upward force on the seal so that the lower stem will slide into the remaining stem hole. Wipe away excessive lubricant prior to installing the bushings. Slide new bushings into position on both the upper and lower stem and firmly insert the stem and seat assembly into one of the housing flange halves with the stem disc still in the open position. Line up the stem gussets with the stem and install the other flange half. Confirm once again that the stem disc is in the open position to ensure proper installation of the seal before installing the four flange bolts and tightening with the two 13mm box end wrenches. After housing flange bolts are tightened, loosen and remove the two upper housing flange bolts so that the actuator, coupling, and position indicator can be installed. For manual handles rather than actuators, this step is not necessary and the handle can be attached directly onto the upper stem of the valve to align with the disc. Begin with installing the position indicator. Align the points to be in the same direction as the disc. Place the valve stem disc into the closed position at this time for normally closed valves. Install the coupling followed by the actuator, aligning the stems and bolt holes in the process. Insert and tighten upper housing bolts to complete the assembly. Apply air to the actuator to test valve function prior to installing the valve back into the process line. Return to the installation location. Gently position and install the valve back in the process. On the SVS series, gently position and support the valve between the connection cover flanges. Line up the holes and install the bolts using a 13 mm wrench to tighten equally in a cross pattern. Reconnect the pneumatic hose to the actuator or control unit and resupply electrical power if necessary. 
Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX flow, APV, SV, and SVS series valves to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order replacement seal kits or tools, contact your authorized SPX flow or APV sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/apv for more information.